Hello and welcome to The Gaming Historian. Well, it's Halloween once again, the perfect time to play your favorite scary video games. Now, when you're talking retro video games, the word scary probably doesn't come to mind right away. With the advancements in technology, video games have been able to better immerse the player in a frightening environment. But that doesn't mean there aren't scary retro games. On my last Halloween episode, I focused on 3D Monster Maze, a creepy game where you're stuck in a maze being chased by a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Did I mention this maze was created by a clown? I hate clowns. Anyway, this year I wanted to talk about an adventure game that a lot of people don't really know about. It's called Uninvited. Uninvited was originally developed for the Macintosh computer in 1986 by ICOM Simulations, a company that helped popularize the point-and-click adventure genre. It was a part of their MacVenture video game series. This included Deja Vu and Shadowgate. The games proved to be very popular on the Macintosh, so starting in 1988, Chemco began porting the series of adventure games to the NES, starting with Deja Vu, then Shadowgate, and then finishing in 1991 with the release of Uninvited. Uninvited has you playing as an unnamed character who has just crashed his car into a tree, right outside a haunted mansion. Your sister has gone missing, so you decide to explore the mansion in order to find her. Soon you uncover dark secrets about the house and clues to where your sister has gone. The first thing you'll notice is the game's interface. Look familiar? Shadowgate and Deja Vu use the same style. In the top left is the in-game action. To the right is your inventory. The bottom left picture is a mini-map. You'll be using this a lot as it provides shortcuts to entering rooms and showing you where other rooms are. Then there are these actions, which you can use to interact with your environment. Now remember, this is a point-and-click adventure game, so you'll be using the D-pad to move around, examine and use items, open doors, and this presents the first problem with these games on the NES. Obviously, the interface was meant to be used with a mouse. However, your mouse is now a D-pad, and fully exploring the game can be a very tedious task. Now, some interactions are over the top and don't really make a lot of sense. For example, I'd use an axe to open a cookie jar. An axe! But then, I can only use a knife to find a hidden item in a couch. The axe won't work. Playing uninvited on the NES can be a time-consuming experience, especially for a perfectionist like me. I mean, I've got to explore everything in every room to make sure I don't miss anything. If only the Mario Paint Mouse was compatible. NES limitations aside, the actual game experience is pretty cool. You can interact with just about everything in this game. Some items are important, others are totally useless. But you don't know for sure, like this faucet in the bathroom. I can turn it on, but what does it do? Why turn it on? The game does provide clues to the player throughout the game, and reading all the dialogue and text is very important to knowing where to go next. The game is narrated with text and it reminds me of an old school text RPG. I gotta say, it adds to the overall creepiness to the game because it lets the player imagine in their head what's going on, allowing you to come up with your own nightmarish visuals. Speaking of nightmares, let's touch on the horror aspect of this game. Personally, I find this game pretty freaky, especially when you play it all alone in the dark. There are plenty of freaky moments to go around in the game, because one wrong action and your character dies. The first one you'll come across is in the hallway when you try to open the door. The back of a woman appears in the hallway. Now right away, I know this is a trap. I mean, just look at the cover of this game. It's pretty obvious it's going to be a skeleton. But one wrong move, and you're dead. I think the combination of the still visual, music, and description just creeps me out. There's quite a few moments like this, and I actually found myself trying to find the rest of them. 
Uninvited even finds humor in this aspect. In one area, the game warns you three times not to enter, claiming there's a giant spider down there and you will surely die. Well, of course, I ignore it and go down. Sure enough, a giant spider kills me. The NES version of Uninvited is slightly different from the Macintosh version. The first obvious change is that the game is in color now, compared to the black and white Mac version. Some might not like this. There's something about black and white that adds to the scariness of the game. Kemco also added music. Again, some people might prefer the Mac silent version, because it makes the game somewhat scarier. Another change that confused me is the plot. In the Macintosh version, you have to rescue your brother from the Haunted Mansion. The NES version, it's your sister. Now the one change I think we can all agree on is the removal of a time limit. In the Macintosh version, you had to beat the game under a certain amount of time, or else the spirits of the house would consume your soul. The NES version removed this limit and even added a continue option so you can restart a few moves before you died. Obviously, Kemco knew playing on the NES wasn't as easy as using a mouse, so removing the time limit was a good idea. They did, however, add a ruby item that when picked up will kill the player over time. So whatever you do, stay away from the ruby. And finally, what's a Nintendo game without some censorship? The original game had some very graphic descriptions when you died, so these were toned down a bit. Pentagrams were changed to stars, and some crosses that appeared on the wall were removed completely. Overall, Uninvited is a fun and spooky experience, but the NES version really suffers with the D-pad control scheme. It just makes exploring, a major part of adventure games, a bit tedious. Now, fair warning, this isn't a pick-up-and-play kind of game. It's an adventure game that will take some time to figure out. Hell, I even had to write some notes down while playing. If you want the NES version of this game, it's gonna run you about $30. Like I said, this game was released in 1991, and by then, the Super Nintendo was the hot new thing. Like most games released later in the NES life, it's pretty uncommon. Now, if you can't find the cart, you can download the Macintosh version, which is considered abandonware at this point. It's free to legally download and play. Well, that's all for this episode of The Gaming Historian. Have a safe and happy Halloween, and thanks for watching. Thank you.